are shooting in noonday sun, literally it is noon, and I love that we're doing this because typically people photograph uh, at, at times they can't control, and when I'm shooting a wedding, I know these are the lighting conditions that I have very often. So we're not going to hide in the shade. We're just going to be out here in the sun. So first thing that you look for whenever you're photographing anything, a lot of people think, let me find a pretty background. Stop looking for pretty backgrounds and start looking for pretty light. Whenever I am searching for light to photograph in, and this does, you know, correspond to my style, which is a little bit more soft and whimsical and romantic. It's not very dramatic with a lot of um, deep shadows. So I'm looking for something that can give me even light that I can also control. So where she's standing is perfect. The light is really above, but even if it's directly above you, it's usually kind of tilted one way or the other. And the way that I look for it is I look for the shadow on the ground. I want the shadow to be coming towards where I'm photographing so that the light is coming behind her. And then I can control the light in front of her. So right here is where I'd put it. She's got a beautiful rim light going on that's highlighting her hair. It's going to separate her from the background, which is another something that's important, especially since she has dark hair and there's a lot of dark green in the background. If I didn't have that rim light, then she's going to kind of get like lost in there. Another thing you want to do is try to separate her from the background a little bit. I'm shooting with the Canon 1DX Mark II and primarily with this 85 1.4 lens. It's going to give me a beautiful bokeh in the background, even though I'm not going to go shoot all the way down at 1.4. Typically, it's going to look great, and then the further away I bring her from the background, the more that's going to be exaggerated, the softer the background is going to get. So take a few steps this way, Brooke. I think this is where I want her to be. And that looks good right there because I'm looking behind her and I can see the highlights of all these green trees back there that are just going to pop up uh, into beautiful bokeh or bouquet, however you want to pronounce it. You just pronounce it that way. But I'm going to say bokeh because I don't know. That's just what I've always said. I think it's actually pronounced bokeh. I think it's a Japanese word. Anyway, so that's what I'm looking for in the background. Now, Whenever you're photographing a human being, please remember that while I do want to pose her and I do want to make sure she looks amazing, you have to remember that this is a human and you need to play to psychology almost more than you need to look at the posing. I'll show you all the posing tricks and things that I'm trying to achieve and why, but any time that I get a good expression, it will absolutely take precedence over some kind of posing mishap. Because that expression, especially when shooting weddings, that's what you're going for. I don't want my clients to look back later and think, oh, I remember how Vanessa posed me there. I want them to remember how they felt that day. Um, so that's what I'm going for. So we will look at all that. We'll look at the psychology of it. And then of course, all little fine tunes and things like that. So. First thing I typically do with brides, and I don't like having them walk a lot, but I will do this so that they just are doing something comfortable, they're uh, kind of being put in an activity, and so I can get my exposure. I just have them walk away and then turn around and walk back towards me. So don't do it yet, um, but I want to do that because then I can be further away from them. They can get used to the fact that I'm photographing them. They're the center of attention, which is not normal unless you're a model. And I'm also getting my exposure as they're walking away. Now, real quick about exposures. I typically get my exposure by using the live view on my camera. This is not an accurate representation of exposure. However, shooting a wedding, it is one of the fastest ways to get pretty close to your exposure and then you can always fine tune it. So I'll just go into live view and I will start off with my ISO as low as I can for the lighting situation, which it is super bright here. Ooh, spider. <laughs> it is super bright here and um, I can go really low and I want to go as low as possible for a nice clean image. So I'm at 100 ISO. Then I'll adjust my aperture to get to the kind of look that I want on the photograph. Just a little cobweb. We're dealing with cobwebs today. This is like bizarre. <laughs> it is close to Halloween. Maybe that's what this is. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm at 2.2 on my aperture. It will focus on her. Another thing is she's got gorgeous blue eyes and um, really nice dark eyeliner. So I'm not gonna have any trouble at all focusing right on her eyes because they're very contrasty. So I know that I can go down to 2.2 and the contrast based autofocus in my camera is going to have no problem finding her eyes. So just a little thing why I'm going down to 2.2 when usually I hover somewhere between 2.5 and 3.2. All right, so I'm there. And then the last thing that I will do is I'll look at my shutter speed which it looks like about 400 is good for her skin tone. But let's take a photo 
and then look at it. So when I took that photo, I can already see a little bit of highlights. So I call them the blinkies. What it is is the highlights on the picture where there's no data, no detail whatsoever are blinking at me to show me it's completely blown out. So I'm actually going to go to 500 because I have a little bit too much on the highlights and I think that will even it out. Yeah, just even it out a little bit more. Of course, it got brighter the second I, <laughs> I did that. Um, what I'm mostly concerned about, two things. I'm concerned about the detail on the dress because she paid a good amount of money for that detail on the dress. And if I make like a $10,000, you know, panina gown look like it's a hundred dollar, I don't know, gown from somewhere else, I'm in trouble. I'm in big trouble. And the bride is going to complain later. The mom of the bride who paid for the dress is going to complain later. And I don't want that. So I'm making sure I can see most of the detail on the dress. And then the other thing I want to make sure I see are the details in the flowers, because these, you know, beautiful florals are very textured, very detailed, and I don't want to blow them out. Again, just making sure that's not blowing out, which we're we're pretty good here. All right, so that's where my exposure is. It's a little bit warm, the white balance, so I'm gonna go down, and I always dial in manually, and that looks pretty good. So I'm at 5,100 on my white balance. So final totals here, ISO 100, aperture 2.2, shutter speed 500th of a second, and white balance dialed in to 5,100. All right, I'm shooting on raw, so, you know, can you go out of white balance? Can you be a little bit offshore? But why not get it right in camera, right? Especially if you're like me and I do same day edits, so. I wanna make sure I don't have a lot of editing to do the night of the wedding if I'm attempting to print them an album that night, which yes, I do.